Hey everybody, what is up? I hope you're doing well. My name is Fergie, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom cupcake building app in Adobe XD with one artboard. Let's get into it. So here it is, a cupcake builder created with one single artboard. And the way I managed to do that is by using components. So I'm going to go through and show you exactly how I created this app. You'll see if I just click through, changing my toppings, my frosting, my sponge, there's even a magic button for sprinkles, which is my favorite part. Now to start with, you're going to need your graphics, your illustration for your cupcake pieces. Now you can get some free stock or you could draw these yourself. I have mine here. And I'll leave a link in the description to where I downloaded these from. I cannot take credit for this at all. Uh, I don't think I could illustrate quite this well. But you'll see I've got them here in Illustrator because they are vector-based graphics. Now, the reason I have them in Illustrator is because I added them to my library. So you'll see here all the different parts of the cupcakes are here in a library that I have called Sweet Desserts. That's the name of this project. And I've just added them all in as graphics. Now this is because if I want to come and edit something later, for example, maybe I decide I don't want two of the cupcake sponges having the white paper case. Maybe I want to make one of these a different color. I can come in here and with Illustrator, you know, I can edit, use the uh, edit colors tool and update the graphic. And that would then flow through into XD. So any updates I make on a library element is automatically updated in my XD file. So it just saves me having to then swap out this, this image or this graphic for the new one that I want to update it with. It will just do it automatically. So let's get started. You can see here, I have all the different cupcake parts I want to use. Now, in the previous design that I just showed, I had all of the items stacked on top of each other and I didn't have any labels for flavoring. Now this is completely your choice. You can do it in that way or you can follow along with how I'm doing it. So I'm making them slightly deconstructed. So kind of one piece hovering over another so that we have space to display a label letting the users know what flavor this is. Because you could imagine, you know, looking at this one and this one, you wouldn't know if one is cream cheese, vanilla, you just wouldn't have any idea what it is. It could be toffee, caramel, peanut, could be anything. So this is why we need some labels. Okay, let's get into making our components. So the first component we need is of course for our sponge base. Now, the way in which I did this is by scrolling through the cupcakes. So you'll see, you can see one sliding out and the next one sliding in. You don't have to use that effect. You could have it so that the next flavor just appears. Um, and I'll show you how to do it both ways. So to start with, to create our sliding effect, what I'm gonna do is just copy my layers here. So these are the graphics from my library. And then I've just used the text tool to create the flavor label. And what I'm going to do here is with them all grouped together, I'm going to make them a component. So you can press Command K or you can hit the plus button up here in the inspector panel. And there we go. This is now a component and this is our default state. Now the states are important. That is how the animation works between all the different flavors and everything. So what I'm going to do is just add another artboard here and I'm going to grab our component. I'm just going to roughly lay things out on the screen. Now, this is our default state, which means that within our phone screen here, for default state, vanilla is going to be here and the other flavors are going to be off screen, so we can't see them. Now, we want it to be that so when we tap, it scrolls through. So what we're going to do is create the next state. And because we can't name default, I've left it as vanilla. For the next one, I will name red velvet. Just, you know, to help us know what we're doing all the time. I'm then going to expand our component. 
select all the layers and simply drag them across to where I think is central. Now actually what would be quite good is if I gave myself a little ruler here. You know what, that's kind of close enough for, for right now. Okay, so now when we have red velvet selected, it's in the middle. So, vanilla, red velvet. You see they move? This is basically what we want to do. So it just saves us creating artboards. Now, you could do this with, with multiple artboards and just move the kind of group of items along every time. So I quite like using components. You know, it's actually a really useful tool, uh, a really helpful way of working. I'm gonna do the same again. And um, we're gonna bring chocolate into center. And then our fourth and final state for birthday cake. Drag this across. That's about middle. So, there we go. Nice, right? So, the magic with the swipe across is by using prototype mode. And from default state, we're gonna add an interaction and it's going to be a tap because if we select anything else, you'll see it has to be an artboard destination. So I'm gonna use tap and then you'll see here, we have options from our component. So the next one in line is our red velvet. We wanna make sure this is auto animate. That's really important. Set the duration. So how fast or slow do you, do you want it to slide across? And you can try the different effects. Let's go with ease in, ease out. I think snap might be a bit too much of a bounce. Well, let's try. Let's preview. See, just like that. Do you know what? Snap is okay, actually. Bounce is probably a bit too much. Yeah, okay, I don't like bounce. So you can use snap, you could use ease in, ease out, uh, or none. It depends on your preference. So we've got vanilla going to red velvet, and now we just need to create the same prototype link for all of the flavors. So red velvet is going to go to chocolate. You can see these are set to how I last set them. It will just remember that, so I don't need to change that there. All I need to do is link the flavors. I'm gonna have birthday cake, go back to vanilla. And lovely, and by the time we get to the end, it will go back to vanilla, which also shows the user, hey, there's only these four to select from. And it really was that simple. So you can just do that for all of the different layers, uh, all of the different components. So the layers of cupcake, sponge, topping, frosting, and that's how you can create that slide in view. Now, if you would prefer it to just change, you don't want that slide in animation, here is another way that we can do that. Get myself a new artboard. And what I'm gonna do is copy all of our cupcakes here. And paste them down here. And what I'm gonna do is just hit the align center horizontally. See, it puts them all on top of each other. I know what you're thinking. It looks like a mess. We don't know what's what, but this is part of the magic. We're gonna turn these layers on and off for each component state. So, we have birthday cake and the artwork for birthday cake, chocolate, and so on and so forth. So, all I'm going to do here is command K, make it a component. Then move it over here onto our artboard, horizontal line. And I want to make sure that our default state only shows one flavor. So I'm going to go through and turn off the other layers so that we don't see them. So I'm just using the layers panel for that. And now when I add a new state, come on, from red velvet, go in again, I'm going to turn these off and turn on red velvet. Again, new state, chocolate, 
turn off red velvet, turn on chocolate, new state, birthday cake, double click to edit, turn those off, turn those on, and there we go. Now with this selected, I'll go into our prototype mode again. We're going to add our tap interaction. So from Vanilla, we're going to go to Red Velvet. And for this, I actually just want Ease In Out. And there you go. You see it just sort of does a, a quite nice faded transition, but it's not just a, it's not the same as using the transition type. It knows that the layer is there, so it's going to fade one in. So fade the vanilla from 100% opacity to like 0% and vice versa for the next flavor that we go to. So red velvet is going to chocolate, chocolate is going to birthday cake and birthday cake is going to Default. See, there we go. And then loops back around. So, what we can do next is our frostings. And I'm going to continue using this second method that we've just created. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to click them in any particular order. So you can give this to somebody to play with and they don't have to click anything in particular. You can click through these as many times as you like because it's one artboard with components and we've looped it. So all the frostings are just gonna keep going around. So you can see, I can click this as many times as I want to get to the combination that I might want to order. Okay, so moving on to our toppings. And let's hit our preview, make sure that's all good. There we go. Lovely. And now for the magic, the sprinkles. So you'll notice that I had it so we can press a button and the sprinkles will just sprinkle down and fall down onto our cupcake. But they're all falling at slightly different rates they fall down fairly quickly and if we don't want them they just go back up and disappear of course this is yet another component let's go ahead and we're going to make a button we're going to use our type tool and we're going to add sprinkles And what I'm going to do is just copy my styling here. So I was using the Brandon Grotesque font in this really nice pink color. And I'm going to use a rectangle to draw a button. Let's make it 60. Should fit. I'm just going to send that backwards. Oops. Select them both, centrally align everything group it and then turn on padding so that we can make this either equal or we can change it so that on the top and bottom is one level of padding and on the left and right is another so for example we might want extra padding 
on the sides. And I'm going to come in and just round these corners because I want a square button. So put this onto our screen. Now the biggest one is this one. Biggest one is vanilla. Just making sure they all fit together with enough space. Okay, I think these are good. So I can make sure the magic sprinkle button is down here. Might be a bit thick. So I'm gonna change this. And maybe make this just a little smaller. So you see, even though I've made the font smaller, it still kept that padding rule. Now, I'm just going to add this pink here so that I can add it as a border colour. There we go. Okay. So, we have our button for adding sprinkles. So if there's no sprinkles here, we want to add them. We need some sprinkles. And as you'll see from my artwork file, there were some great sprinkles included, but you can also use the shape tool in XD to draw these and everything in there. But I quite like these because they've got all of the kind of gradient shading and colors and everything that I quite like. So you'll see I've already added them into my library here. So back in XD, I know I can just bring that in from my library and sprinkles there we go drag and drop and we have some sprinkles so i know that once i've added them i want them to be about here so it always lands on the frosting obviously once we've added them there's going to be a minus button here so let's do this the opposite way around we've got our sprinkles selected and I'm also going to select this button, so the group we just created. Yeah. And make them a component. You can also name your components. We're going to go onto our sprinkles component. And what we're going to do is basically ungroup that smart object graphic that I just pulled in from my library by hitting Command Shift G, or you can left click and ungroup. So you'll see that will just make it now a group with all the different shapes that make up those sprinkles. Now, that's quite an important step because we want to start isolating these individual sprinkles so we can make it look like they're sprinkling down onto our cupcake. Okay, so we're going to create a new state and this is going to be no sprinkles. Cats, no sprinkles. And here we go. So, this is one of my favorite little tricks. Firstly, we're going to tell you well, we want to add sprinkles if we don't have sprinkles. So, we change that to a plus. That's the button ready. And now we've got to get our sprinkles ready. So, if it helps, you can turn these other layers off. So, I'll turn these off for a second just so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Okay, here we go. We've got sprinkles selected. Now I want to select all of these different shapes apart from one and I'll explain that in a little bit. So I've just deselected this yellow one here which is this one that you can see is not selected within the group. And then what I'm going to do is pull them up off of the artboard. But I'm not just going to do that because we don't want this to just plonk down like that. Okay, imagine that's what the animation would be like. We don't really want that. We want it to be a bit more interesting. So you can have them, you can put them just here, just above the artboard, and they fall quite quickly. You have to change the speed, they would slowly fall. Or you can use different heights. So what we're going to do is give them quite a bit of space. And then what I'm going to do 
Okay, let's come back into view. This is actually easier to do off of an artboard, so let's just move that component so we can see everything. And what I'm going to do is select one sprinkle, bring it down there, and then again, select all of them, deselect this one I have here, and this one will be made clear in a moment. I'm basically using that as my anchor, so they all know where to fall to. And now with all of the sprinkles selected, I'm going to use the alignment tool. So I'm going to distribute them vertically, which is why we just pulled one down. See, it looks more like kind of sprinkle rain now. And you could also distribute them horizontally, just to separate them out a little bit. So there we go, we have our sprinkles. And this one that is left, the yellow anchor one, which is going to turn the fill of that one to 0% opacity. So now we can put our button back over here. Let's do our animation. So from no sprinkles, we want to tap it and go to sprinkles. And from sprinkles, if we tap it, we want to have no sprinkles. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn those other layers back on. And then we need to come back in and add our arrow buttons. But let's see the sprinkle magic. There you go. And you can, of course, play with the easing. So we could have them snap. So they kind of do that little, kind of, it's kind of a spring, which is kind of nice. You can use any of the easing options that you like. So this is basically how I created that prototype. But you'll notice now, because I have the sprinkles component on top of the frosting, can't click the frosting. And this is why I also added in the arrow buttons at the side because it meant that I can tap the sides of each layer rather than the layer itself. We'll use our icons plugin, icons for design, and we'll put in arrow. And let's use these ones here. I don't know why it always does that, but they kind of place it on a weird part of the artboard. So we're just going to cut and paste those back where we want them and then I want to just nudge them in by say about 20 pixels. So I'm just holding down Option, Shift and using my arrows keys to nudge them by 10 pixels at a time. And we could fill them with my Sweet Dessert brand colour pink. And then what we're going to do is come into our component add the arrows in. It stayed because we've done it on default first. I'm just going to paste them again, bring it down for frosting. And remember this means that we'll be able to nudge the flavour without it interfering with that sprinkle interaction. I think about there is kind of nice. So now you'll see when we go into preview mode I can hit and change the frosting without accidentally turning on the frosting, the, the frosting, the sprinkles. <laughs> so now sprinkles is on our button here. And we can make whatever combo we like. And all you have to do is add your final touches. You know, maybe you want to add an order now button, but I like to add in our little iPhone frame and give it a background colour so our artboard can be what colour do we want it? Something a bit warmer than just grey. It's kind of cream colour is what I was using before. And I also lock the layer so it doesn't interfere with me wanting to click on other things. And there you have it, that's your cupcake app with just four components and one artboard.
If you like this tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for my next videos. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.